Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stale Popcorn Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen, and with me is my co-host, Christopher. Hello, Stephen. I didn't know we were on a full first name basis, but yes. I guess we are, but uh, it's it's going well. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. That's all. I ate some pizza earlier, so I'm doing good. Ooh, so did I, actually. Very good, very good. Not today, just earlier this oh, year. just earlier in your life. Yeah. yeah, earlier. Nice. Well, I got a couple of announcements, um, just a couple housekeeping items. Uh, for those of you who may not know, uh, we do have a Facebook page, the Stale Popcorn Podcast uh, Facebook group, so you can go on and head over there. We got some members over there. If you're a part of it, thanks for already joining, and... Uh, Go ahead and join there. We got some some people over there, some discussions going. So yeah, head on over there if you'd like to. Another housekeeping: uh, if you hear from our YouTube channel, thanks for joining us. We're almost at 400 subscribers. Never thought I'd get 400 subscribers. So thanks for that. Yeah, if we get to 400 subscribers, I say we watch the movie 300, one and one. What's the fraction here? One and a fourth times. <laughs> To equal 400? Yeah, uh, sure, yeah. I've never seen That's, it. You've never seen 300? No. Or how about this? Oh. We watch 300, and then we watch the TV show The 100. Mm. And that okay. equals. And then if we get One. to... Uh, how many hours does that guy get his arm stuck in a rock? I forget. <laughs> 127 hours. And then if we get to 527, we throw on that movie... <laughs> We just keep it building here. The number 27, that's another number. Mm. If we get seven more, we can do the lucky number 11. Mm-hmm. Anyways, so we got... a lot of promises, Chris, here. Got a lot of stuff to watch, if that's for sure. I guess so, yeah. But uh, thanks yeah. for subscribing, you know. Appreciate you here. Thanks yeah, for joining the Facebook group. Uh, we're just... Uh, we're just hitting on all cylinders, as they say in the mechanic industry. They also say in the mechanic industry, you're going to need a new air filter that costs $500 to single moms. So They're also going to say uh, you're going to need to get that extended car warranty. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I got a question for you, Chris. What have you been watching lately? Oh, let me tell you. I watched a movie called Irish... Wish, I Irish believe. Wish. You seen With it? Our you own heard? Lindsay Lohan. Yep. She. No, I haven't seen it. I don't know what it is, but something about I movies that take place in Ireland that are rom coms, I just despise with a passion. We're talking Irish Wish. We're, We're talking, talking <laughs> other leap <laughs> year. Ooh, yeah. P.S. I love you. Mm. hate them all um there's probably some other one but yeah it was uh i'll be honest we had to stop and do something so i missed the end and i forgot about it to now but I, i'm fine not reaching the conclusion but happy for Lindsay, you know sure she's made a comeback yeah technically she is back her face though is not the same as it was I was never like a, I was never into Lindsay per se. Sure. When a lot of people were, so to me she's still she's fine or whatever. But yeah. she doesn't she doesn't really look too much different to me. Mm. But others. I never I never gotten that. I was more of a a Hillary Duff kind of guy, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean, sure. That's yeah. That's the better choice. IMO. Yeah. But uh, watch that. I I gave it a two out of five. I I want to particularly recommend. Still working on that Flowers of the Moon. You know, watching five minutes away. today. Of, you know, ten minutes tomorrow. So I'm about a third of the way done. So nice. And it, it's not bad. It's just uh, you know, things pop up. But Long, you yeah. know, yada yada. Is it like three and a half hours? Yeah. Three and a half hours, and I think I just got through Act One, which, you know, so far not bad. Yeah. It's just, um, and then I did actually watch an episode 
and a half ish of that X Men ninety seven show. Ooh, yes. Does it hold up? It's similar to the old show, believe it or not. Really? But good. it seems yeah. like it's like meant for people that haven't seen it as well, because it's like first episode, it's like, oh, Cyclops, and he's like doing what he's like, oh, I when I take my glasses off, I shoot laser beams from my eye, and it's like, oh, yeah, Rogue, <laughs> if I touch someone, I will kill them and steal their power. It's like, who doesn't know this by now, you know? And it's like, oh, mm. the same characters, basically. And I'm like, so I, I guess that was kind of weird for me. I'm like, we get it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing they're trying to bring in them young kids introduce them to this but um it's fine it's not like it's a kid's show so i can't i'm not it's fine i'll say it there i don't know if i'll it's kind of like loki to me where it's like i might finish it but i might also forget about it and then never finish it it's like it's just kind of there yeah sure sure but that's okay. that's all I've been watching. How about you, my friend? Uh, I've been watching a uh, Hulu special. It's uh, called Shogun. Ooh. It's very good. Chris, I got a question for you. Do you like Game of Thrones? I sure do. Do you like Asians? Bearing in mind, if you say no, it'll be on public record. Which Asian are we talking? The Japanese. Oh, I love the Japanese. Sure. Then, then boy, do I got a show for you. It's really good. I like it a lot. I, uh, is it fully released, if you know what I mean? No, it's episode by episode right now. I, and that's what I was going to say. Like, Wait for it to fully come out, because it's, it's been a chore to have to wait episode to episode. Because I, I watch like, the first three in order, and then I'm like, i got to wait now for episode four. So like, I'd say wait for them, just watch them all at once and shotgun them. But uh, it's oh, really great. I like it a lot. Shot, shotgun the Shogun, eh? Shogun the Shogun, yeah. So it's uh, got, uh, how many more sods? How long am I going to have to wait here? Because you know me, I, I don't like to be teased. I like to sure. be satisfied. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's five episodes right now, and I think there's eight. So you have to wait another, maybe about a month. So Samurai, right? It's got the, the new Jackie Chan guy, right? The new Jackie Chan guy? You know what? I, that's like the new Jackie Chan. He's the, he's the token Asian samurai now he, that jackie yep. chan's gone sure uh well yeah. is that who is it who i think it is he's from he's in the last samurai he's also in john wick, john 4, wick 4 yeah mortal Kombat. yeah that I had guy to look up, let me look up his name don't yeah let's hear you pronounce it oh it's nothing could go wrong here oh no uh i know i got this hero yuki sanada nailed it isn't that the creator of nintendo no. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no. Oh no, man, let's... no. But no, you know what I'm saying? He's like, yeah, he's yeah. the new Jackie he's... Chan. Well, he's been around for a while. Uh, I know, but he's he's but... replenished him. You know, sure. He, he's reincarnated. No, he's great in that. He was in anyway, uh, show, if you haven't World, seen it, right? Was he? I you don't know. I haven't seen that? Westworld. He was in no. the Wolverine. That's for sure. Oh shoot, sure, sure. Yeah, he was Wolverine. In, uh, he was in the Wolverine. Forty-seven Ronin. Uh huh. Which I did not really like, but he I haven't was seen it. it. Yeah, he's uh, it's really great. It takes place in I think like 15th century Japan, mm. and uh, it's it's I don't know, it's just good stuff. Like there's good action, cool, good. Well, it's kind of light on action. I feel like in the first few episodes, it's more like setting up the pieces of this chess Ooh, game. Yes. Um, so there's a lot of if you don't like reading captions, then I got bad news for Is you. Is it cause... in Japanese? So like ninety, well, I wouldn't say ninety, maybe seventy five percent of it's in Japanese. But it follow one of the main characters is uh, John Blackwood, John Blackthorn, or something like that, and he's the Englishman who's kind of like the point of view character, and he's so all of his dialogues in English. But I looked up his name because I thought it at first I thought it was uh, Rick Grimes from Walking Dead, mm. but it's not. His name is actually uh, Cosmo Jarvis. Fun name. Cosmo. Cosmo Jarvis. He's got a fun uh, British accent in the show. He's—I don't even know. It's kind of kind of a there will be blood accent. He 
He talks like this, and he has a very oh, old, ex, old end accent. Yes. It's very nice, very good. Yes, I, I'm from Shogun. If you don't know where it's from, I'm from Shogun. Is that uh, British? Uh, doesn't sound. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I, thought that he, like I thought that movie took place <laughs> in America. What? Oh yes, well, he I said my kind milkshake. Of. Oh. Yes, well, no, it's, yeah, he's just got a imagine Michael Caine. Uh, you know, uh, some people just like to watch the world burn, Mister White. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, if you haven't seen it, uh, I'd suggest just waiting for it, but it's really good. It is a slow burn. So if you're impatient on stuff like that, then I don't know what to tell you. Um, but yeah, okay. other than that, I haven't been, been watching anything else. So, okay, all yeah. Right. You got um, any, uh, any other now or any other movie news this week? Uh, nothing, nothing really I... stood out to me. Yeah, we were we were gonna try to watch Ghostbusters, but uh, myself, I'm not a huge fan of the franchise. I don't know about yourself, uh, so I just no. was like, I'd rather watch me some Jake Gyllenhaal, and so mm-hmm. that's kind of what we're gonna talk about today is 2024's Roadhouse, featuring mm-hmm. the likes of Jake, J- more like Jack Gyllenhaal. Am I bloody oh, right? Yes. Blah, blah, blah. Huh. More like uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Ooh, that was a bad, like that. that was off the cuff. That was pretty there. good, off the yeah. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor. We got bloody. I almost said Stellan Skarsgård for some reason, but <laughs> he's definitely not in that. Post one. Malone. Oh yeah, Post Malone's in there for like thirty seconds. Mm-hmm. How about we do this? We're gonna give a quick little plot summary. If we liked it or not, and then we'll go into spoilers. How about that? I I think that's a great idea. Wherever did you come up with this idea, Stephen? Oh, I don't know. I'll just probably like doing a few, maybe a dozen episodes in the past. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. It starts off non-spoiler, but you you, you get post Malone. He's fighting. He's punching. He's kicking. He's screaming. He's biting. He's tripping. He's whipping. He's whatever it is, you know. He's nay naying, and uh, <laughs> and then you cue Jake Gyllenhaal takes his shirt off he's got a six pack he's got an eight pack he's got a 12 pack he's you know he's got a pac man he's got uh, (laughs) he's he's, got abs on his legs (laughs) yeah (laughs) he's very strong is what i'm trying to say just trying to paint a little picture and uh he was a former uh fighter ufc mma Mm. kind of man and uh he gets offered a job to go up, uh, basically protect a bar that's called the Roadhouse in Miami. Florida. Florida. The Florida Key. Something Keys. What was the key? Yep. Something Keys. Glass Key. Glass Key. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, people you know, people don't like him stepping on his turf. They're trying to scare him away. And he's like, you know, hey, man, I, I ain't backing down. And... and and uh, that's basically the plot here without spoiling. Mm-hmm. Was there anything else uh, I missed there? No, I mean, that's pretty... It's a very simple story. That's pretty much it. Uh, it is a remake of the 1989 Roadhouse featuring Patrick Swayze. Mm-hmm. Uh, this time it's directed by Doug Lehman. Doug Lyman? One of those. Sure. He directed uh, Edge of Tomorrow, Born Identity, uh, oh. among others. So he's got, he's got a pretty good uh, record under his belt and yeah. directed a few good movies. Um, American Made. Sure, yeah. That was yeah. a good one. Oh, the wall. What the gypsy is the wall? Oh, it's not the... Uh, I was thinking the Great Wall. I'm, I'm a little disappointed. Oh. It's uh, thought... probably some Donald Trump propaganda, but... <laughs> oh, Jumper. He directed Jumper. Jumper. With Hayden? With Hayden. Oh, and very good. Very good. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. The new one? No, the 2005 oh. one with Get Angelica here, and Brad. Okay. I thought that anyway. one was fine. I mean, it's been 15 years since I've seen it, but I'm sure it holds huh. up. Nothing wrong with it, right? Yeah. I haven't seen it. So you got a good director here. Mm-hmm. Stephen, let there me is, ask. There... Oh, sorry. You. I was going to say, there was just a little bit of controversy surrounding this film. Ooh. Uh, because I guess the studio said told Doug Lehman Lyman uh that they were gonna do a theatrical release um but it ended up going to Amazon. So 
the director decided not to go to the premiere and there's this kind of whole big show. Um, the so, premiere as in like sitting on his living room couch and hitting prime? No, they have, they have <laughs> like a, 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 you know, Hollywood premiere. Oh, yeah, go to the Amazon that. warehouse, uh, <laughs> Sorry, yeah. show it to the... Sit next to Jeff Bezos. The 12-year-olds, you know, stacking the trucks there. <laughs> Yeah, no, I guess, uh, I guess, yeah, the director was upset that it went to streaming because he wanted, uh, I guess, he, he made a deal with MGM and then Amazon bought MGM. And so they were like, we're just going to release it to streaming. So the director was upset with that. Uh, but I think, it, I think it benefits from streaming, honestly, because I wouldn't have seen this in the no, theater, me TBH. So, and to be honest, I, I'm glad I kind of saw it here in streaming because I liked it. It was a pretty good movie overall. So, yeah. What would you give it out of five stars on a letterbox score? Oh, uh, we can decide right now, and I'll I'll rank it. Follow us on Letterbox. Uh, yeah, uh, probably, probably like a three. Hmm. What do you think? So a three to you means how would you rate a three? Because a three to me, and how I've been doing Letterbox is fine. Not really good. Probably never watch it again. Exactly. Yeah. So That's yeah, I'll how say you that. Say. Yeah. You know, like there's no reason to come back to this. Well, Steve, that's where I disagree with you. Okay. All right. I thoroughly enjoyed this film. Sure. This. Okay. Honestly, I would say this is the funniest film I've seen since Dungeons and Dragons. Is that yeah. fair to say? Did you? Th I thought it was. There was like probably more than one hand of times I laughed out loud. So it at was, least it six was, times. It was pretty funny. I wouldn't say it's funnier than Dungeons and Dragons. No, I said funniest since. Oh, since. Okay, since. Sure. Because to me, <laughs> there's like one good comedy a year that I'm like laughing. And uh, last year's Dungeons and Dragons. This year, so far, it's my roadhouse here. I thought it was. I thought it was very funny. So would you put it at like four stars then? Well, I was thinking minimum three and a half, probably three and a half. I might, I, I would go four if it was just myself, but since we're contrast, I say we meet halfway three and a half. I'm okay with that. It's not one. Uh, it's thing with me is it's my type of movie. I like an action movie. I like a comedy kind of straight to the point. Not a lot of fluff here, you know? Mm -hmm. And it, and movies that don't take themselves too serious, which this movie definitely it does, does not. not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, yeah, I'll give it three and a half. I think I think it was good. I think uh, I love stories that are just like just a little snapshot of characters' lives. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't have a message or anything. It's just like, hey, watch this story about this dude who happened to do this thing for a few months. And that's it, you know. It doesn't have to set up a universe or nothing. It's just like a fun little yep. story. So, I agree yeah. with you. Did you see the original one, let me ask? May I ask? I, I did not. Um, I have not seen it, so I, I don't have any connection to it. Um, have you seen it? I don't think... I haven't seen it, no. All right. But, uh, Maybe we can... Last, oh, before we get into the spoilers, unless you have more to add, it. Is no. The movie is very, like, it's cheesy. It feels like it's trying to... Uh, I'd never seen the original, but I assume the original came out uh 1989, I believe, where mm -hmm. I'm sure it's kind of cheesy Prime movie. Swayze, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you got Prime Swayze. And I feel like this is trying to replicate that, where it's, like, not taking itself too serious, a little cheesy, but I think it... I, I thought it worked well. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think, yeah, it kind of is kind of unapologetic because some of the characters in there are just our characters and it, they wrote the story and they're just like, wipe their hands. Like, that's it. That's what we got. You know, that's what we're going to go with. So I say if you have Prime and uh, you want to go see it, take a couple hours and go see it if you got nothing else to do because I think it was pretty good. Definitely uh, one of the better ones that are out this year, I'd say. I'd say it's my second favorite for the right year. Right behind Madam Web, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'd say, yeah, the best one was Dune still, but uh, this was better okay. than any other movie we've done, right, this year? Oh, yeah, yeah. Better than Self-Reliance and 
uh, mm-hmm. Rebel Moon and blah. blah. Well, that's not <laughs> Madam Web. Uh, well, are... I guess I, let's just get into spoilers. Let's talk about it. And how about that? Sure. So I want to talk about the good things. Uh, one of the good things you talked, you graced over a little bit at the very beginning. Do you want to go more in depth summary in case people? Uh... Sure, so sure. They understand yeah, yeah, yeah. the movie in case they aren't going to watch it and don't listen to us here. Sure, sure. Well, you should listen to us because it's a fun movie. But uh, at the beginning, yeah. So Chris, he talked about how at the very beginning you see Post Malone. He's in a Fight Club and and just going ham on this big, you know, huge bald guy and just like beating the crap out of him. And um, no words are spoken. There's just he's just see him beating him up. And uh, you see Jake Gyllenhaal's character come in. He's the next fighter. And then Post Malone's just like, nah, man, I'm not going to fight him. Like, that's, that's, screw that, you know. So was, I, th- I thought that was a great way to introduce Jake's character because, like, even the toughest guy in the whole bar, like, won't fight him and you don't know why. So immediately you're like, okay, this guy's, I mean, you knew from the trailers that he's a ex USC fighter, but you know there was a little bit more to it. Um, but he had Jake Gyllenhaal gets offered a job from a woman named Frankie to say, Hey, these guys uh, from the Florida Keys that are keep ruining my bar, and I need someone to uh, look after it and be my main bouncer. We've gone through the, the dozen and a half bouncers, and we just need someone who is going to um, just make sure they're all in check. And when she first meets him, he's actually he actually got stabbed from that fight, uh, and so she meets him with a knife wound in his hand, and she's like, "Well, this is the guy that I need in my bar." Who's because he gets stabbed and it's just like nothing phased him at all. And he just literally puts duct tape over over it and calls him a day. So great way to introduce Jake's character. But he gets down there and, and meets some people, meets a little girl who owns a bookstore, I guess. And uh, and then uh, he teaches people how to defend themselves. And it's, it's a real like kind of Western vibe where the lone ranger kind of comes in and helps protect the town and the youngins and the folks and the citizens and all that jazz. And... Uh, Come to find out the reason these guys are keep messing around with the bars because their boss wants to tear down that bar to build condominiums. <laughs> <laughs> That's the evilest pull out I've ever heard. Like, gosh dang entrepreneurs wanting to build condoms like mm-hmm. <laughs> condominiums. <laughs> <laughs> uh but um so yeah, they they the main boss catches wind that that Jake Joan Hall is like really causing trouble for everyone and and he calls in, I guess, uh, through a series of events. Uh, I think an Oscar contender for next year comes in in the form of one uh, introduction to acting, Conor McGregor. Mm. Should we uh, should we talk about him for a bit? Yeah. So I <laughs> I have here in my notes. It, I wrote Conor McGregor feels like he's doing an impression of someone who's drunk doing a Conor McGregor impression. <laughs> like, <laughs> this, this dude, I don't know what kind of direction they told him, but he's just a, I, I'd say it's a fun character to watch. He's just like this absolute fireball of just destruction and mayhem. And he's like the guy from the mayhem commercials, the Allstate guy, mm-hmm. if it were real. And he's just a, a nut job who's up against Jake Gyllenhaal. And so, they got to fight each other, and and it's great to watch. That's all I got to say. It's just fun to watch, you know? Yeah, I saw that, and, I was, and I'm pretty sure that's his first movie, at least the first mm-hmm. one I'd seen, and he's he's like a main character in it. It's not like a standard athlete in it for like two scenes. He's in it for yeah. basically, you know, three-fourths of the movie yeah. here. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I'm like, I don't, I can't really say if he's good at acting or not, <laughs> but his character is enjoyable, and yeah. Uh, yeah, he's just unhinged the whole time, and like, I, I feel like I've heard him talk, but his accent still sounds like odd to me for some reason. I'm like, it's because like yeah. I caught myself. I'm like, what is this? A- this guy's doing a is bad it- accent. I'm like, wait a minute, this he's. His actual accent, yeah. They, so it's like, like that's his normal voice here. Or... Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I couldn't tell. I I have uh I have notes on the bad stuff, but I guess just continuing on on the good stuff. Yeah, I really liked his character. He was super fun. Uh, he brought a lot of unique stuff to the fight scenes. Uh, 
hats off to all the fight coordinators and the choreographers because a lot of stuff goes into that. And people just see, you know, people punching, but a lot more goes into that. So they, I think they did a lot of good stuff on the fight scenes. I think 85% of them were great. Um, but the 15% I'll talk about later. What did you think about all the, which was like maybe a good chunk of the movie, which is the fight scenes. What did you think of them? Yeah, I thought the fight scenes were good. Um, mm-hmm. Especially like they have the big fight scene at the end. Mm-hmm. I thought they were good. Like the movie, it kind of feels like a, a poor man's John Wick, if you will. Sure. Where it's like I get that. I'm a I love John Wick. That's like my five mm-hmm. stars here, and it's mm-hmm. it's not John Wick by any means, mm-hmm. but it's like it's kind of got that fun action where it's like a lot of quick hits and bones mm-hmm. break, and and then going with the comedy, it's like random moments that'll just make you laugh out loud that you're yeah. just not expecting and yeah um but the action i thought was pretty good i mean uh you're not expecting like uh ip man or uh you know uh, the raid type things here but yeah, mm-hmm. i thought it was pretty good especially like um i like this the end fight is good there's also like the first fight with jake gyllenhaal um where he slaps the bikers. Yeah, he's just like slapping yeah. them in the face. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Um, a lot of, uh, you know, I broke broke this bone. I, You know, he's slapping them and then he just, you know, murders that one guy randomly. <laughs> and I'm like, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> punches that guy in the throat and then kills he's him. Like, I'm like, he oh. can no longer breathe. <laughs> yeah. And then kicks him in a pool and then yeah. carries his body. And I'm like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, uh, I really like Jake's character too. He's like a kind of a stoic guy, but also super friendly too. Uh, I like that, that kind of characterization where the guy's really nice, but if you provoke him to a certain point, you will regret it. You know, uh, I don't know if that's present, present in the old one. Uh, I don't know how the characterization has changed in this, but I liked, I like that kind of, uh, character. And I think it really works in this movie. Jake Gyllenhaal does a great job. He is a, man among men i can't think of a movie he's been in that is bad uh every time he's on the screen oh my goodness he's so good you know what i'm saying yeah speaking of the original again i'd never seen it but i just pulled up the wikipedia to uh see like i just had it up here and just like the plot the first line james dalton is a professional bouncer working security Although stoic and cool-headed, he's tormented by memories of a man he killed in self-defense by ripping out his throat. And I'm like, how do you, uh, how do you claim self-defense if you rip out someone's throat? I'm sorry, officer. I didn't know that would happen. It was not on purpose. I was just defending myself, honest. Oh, man. Speaking of the old one, uh, the part I have seen is that final fight between him and whoever his name is. Mm-hmm. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, he, he rips out that guy's throat in the end and the old one. Mm-hmm. Um, and spoiler alert, there's no throat ripping out in this one, which I was a bit disappointed in. And there's also no, uh, mention of the iconic line. <laughs> if you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, I know. I used to, <laughs> guys like you would, pre- I was waiting for that. I was, I was like, waiting for it too. I was I'm like, like oh, where is it going to happen? I was like, is Jake going to say it or is the other guy, <laughs> you know? I thought for sure. Like that, that line alone was like perfect for Conor McGregor's I know. character. I was like, oh, he's going to say it he's when they were in the boat it. at the end. I was like, I was going to, no, no. Oh, like, ah, I was a little disappointed because I'm like, that would have fit so perfectly, and it would have been funny, but uh, yeah, no such thing. But <laughs> yeah, I looked up that scene in the original just for lols, and uh, two of the top comments. The first one: "This is something you don't want to hear when you're fighting a guy in the middle of the woods and, <laughs> and losing." <laughs> and then the next one: "By the looks of this guy, this is not consensual sex we're talking about." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's good stuff. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, well, I, we've we've sung its praises as well enough. Uh, any other good stuff you want to highlight in here? Well, I let's see. Good action. Some funny parts, like for example, there's a scene where he carries this guy's the guy he 
rip, you know, hits his throat, can't breathe, kills him, mm-hmm. drags mm-hmm. him, puts him in a cooler so he doesn't stink up his house overnight or whatever, drags him to the beach. Um, basically, he's trying to plan this, like, uh, you know, set up. set up, and there's a dirty cop, and so he shoots the guy with bullets, and he, you know, he's going to frame the cop, and so mm-hmm. he's like, oh, I know a thing about concussions, and he hits the cop in the head <laughs> trying to make it so he forgets his memory, yeah. and then calls the police on him, and then, like, next scene, the, you know, sheriff guy shows up, and he's like, where's my money? Because he stole the cop's money. Yeah. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, he said you shot some guy and something about short-term memory. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, oh, uh, that was pretty. That, that, that was part. funny. And then also the, <laughs> there's a part where he's fighting one of the bad guys at the end, not Conor McGregor, the, the guy from Game Night. <laughs> and he's like walking in the garage and the guy shoots and he misses him with like a spear gun. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then Jake's just like a fucking spear gun. <laughs> uh, I was yeah, just I like, forgot about that. Part. A lot of those where it's just like, <laughs> just random. Like they, them, they're pretty. It's pretty funny, man. I'm, not, I'm not gonna front you here. Sure. Yeah. Um, no, there. Look at yeah. No, there were some funny parts. Uh, I'll give you that. It was, it was a chuckle worthy performance out of him and a couple others. But uh, um. Yeah, as far as I think those are my main positives. Good flick, my type of movie here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for definite, for definite. I guess going into some minor gripes I had. Um, going back to the fight scenes, uh, again, they were great. You know, love all the choreography, but to me, especially the first one with Post Malone. It looked weird. It looked like it was off for some reason. And I watched the f- first part of it again. It looked like he was like keyed, keyframed in there. Like it looked like CGI at times for Post Malone and a couple other fights. I don't know if you would notice that or yeah, saw that. I I do like when they punch him in the face. And mm-hmm. it, yeah, it does look like it. That's why I said it's not a John Wick. Sure, yeah. It's a light light. But yeah, I know what you mean. Some scenes like... That scene where uh, he's just walking on the bridge or something, this car comes out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. It just yeah, like was... looks like they, you know, t- did 8x speed. Like, it just looks super weird to me. I don't, yeah. Did it look weird to you here? Yeah, a couple of times when, like, the camera mover would do that, it was, like, so unrealistic that you know that a camera can't possibly move like that. A, a person, a car, like, that physical movement, I can't put my eye on it or put my tongue on it exactly but i know that like that movement and everything is not real you know yeah so my brain was just like ah processing it, it you was know. like in my mind i was like is this like a hallucination dream like that's yeah what i thought it, it was fake like. at first yeah very strange so, so yeah some yeah, of the cg a was a bit distracting yeah another qualm i had was especially with conor mcgregor if you want to teach someone what adr is uh show them this movie because uh, there was some glaring ADR. Um, if I don't know if you noticed that, especially with Conor McGregor, it what was is like ADR automated dialogue replacement. So it's like uh, when when you have to go in post production and like re-record line. So like Madam Web. <laughs> yeah, that movie. yeah, like Madam Web. Yeah, but it's like Conor McGregor. You can tell like because it sounded weird. When he said things, you're like, okay, so that's been recorded after the fact and it's just been placed here because it doesn't sound like any other thing. It doesn't sound like someone in that environment. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That was a bit distracting for me at times. Um, Also distracting was Conor McGregor's accent. We kind of mentioned that. I know we talked about how funny it was, but in my humble opinion, there was a slight, I would say, miscalculation at the very end fight scene with uh, Conor McGregor and Jake Gyllenhaal, because they are going balls to the wall, just like beating the crap out of each other. Like it's played for serious. Like they're just like the shirts off in the middle of this wreck bar, just going at <laughs> each right. other. I think I know what and, you're saying. <laughs> and, and Conor McGregor hits Jake Gyllenhaal's face into a piano. And Jake Gyllenhaal's like, 
the piano sounds out of tune. <laughs> <laughs> and Conor McGregor's like, sounds fine to me. <laughs> yeah. it's just like, what kind of loony tune <laughs> bull crap is that? Like, <laughs> yeah. It took me right out. I was like, uh, cause like, I was, I, I guess I'm in the camp of John Wick. We're like, this is serious. You know, we got played this for serious. This is, this is life or death. Mm-hmm. And then that part happens. I was just like, ah, it didn't really work for me. That's all. Yeah. I, yeah, it wasn't like uh, I don't. I didn't laugh out loud. I might have did a you know small exhale out of my nose or something, but uh, yeah, I know what you mean there. <laughs> yeah, but you know, more hits than misses, I'd say. Sure. You know? Yeah, yeah. I will say, uh, I guess this is more of a positive, but the cast—it's not star-studded. What's like a step below star-studded? Uh, like uh, clouded, cloud, uh, moonlight, shadow, studded. shadow, studded. Because sure. you got Jake <laughs> Gyllenhaal, who you can name, and then besides the two celebrities, Post Malone and Conor McGregor, like there's a bunch of actors you recognize, and you're like, hey, he's from that one thing, but you can't. You don't name know. Him. Name. Can you name any other people in this? Gun to my head, no. Yeah, I, I recognize the guy from Game Night, yeah. and I recognize that one guy. He he was kind of the funny uh, Latino guy who got his arm broken. Mm-hmm. He's funny. Uh, he's from a show called, um, gosh dang, I can't remember the name of it. It's a Comedy Central show. That he's pretty funny in. Um, but yeah, other than that, nah. Yeah, um, he was in. Oh, what was he in? He was. Uh... Oh, maybe it'll come Arturo back to Castro. Me. Oh, his name. Um, the menu. Yeah, that's what I know him from. That's where he, he was. Also yeah. in uh, that Weird Al movie, if you've seen it. The plays, biopic. Yeah, it plays Pablo Escobar. Mm. But yeah, I'm just like watching. Uh, like you see him, I'm like, hey, it's that one guy that from one guy. Yeah, and then it's like, the oh, thing. it's the guy from Game Night. Oh, it's the uh, the villain from Fast Five. Oh. Uh, it's that rat That's girl from, from uh, Suicide Squad. Squad. It's the uh, oh, it's uh, that guy from you. Uh, oh, it's the other guy from uh, anyone but you. Like it's just like yeah, a yeah. oh, it's the uh, it's the girl from Bear. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get off? <laughs> what was it not? <laughs> <laughs> It's all means uh, to an end, Stephen. Okay, I get you, I get you. Uh, no, I get what you mean. We got to come up with a name for that. Not star studded. What's something below a star? I'll just, I'll workshop it. Leave it in the comments below. Or yeah. Just put it on Facebook. Yeah, I don't, uh, something with, what's below a star? Mm. Clouds. Cloud studs? <laughs> clouds, uh, but you can't really stud a cloud. Cloud, uh. Foggy, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, other, I don't really have any other complaints. Like some of it, like you just can't look at it logically. Because mm-hmm. it, if you do, you could find plenty. Like oh, sure, like yeah. their whole point is just to break this, uh, burn down this bar, or, like get rid of it. I'm like just pour gasoline <laughs> and burn right. it at night when he's not there. You know, like or Very like. Simple. <laughs> There's a part where he he drops off, like he beats up the people at first, and he's like take drives them to the hospital, you know, funny. And then mm-hmm. the there's a nurse lady who's like, hey jerk, you making us work hard, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then she's like, oh, you got you're bleeding here. Let me uh, <laughs> let me take a look here, you know. Even though she was just mad at him. And then there's like a she's like, oh, let me. Uh, carterize it or something he's like no <laughs> and yeah. no explanation like no i i like the paint or something oh all right and then she's like here take some drugs like no questions asked here <laughs> take these and uh just like stuff like that where it's just like just don't don't think about it is all yeah yeah or the you know the whole evil plan to build some <laughs> rich condom, people yeah. condoms you know <laughs> Yeah, you said it. Or, like, the fact that, I don't, <clears throat> there's, like, a battle, or a battle, like, a they go to this boat, 
in the ocean here and have their meet up at the end and then he blows up the boat by blowing up a boat next to it <clears throat> so yeah. both the main boats are down and then somehow it's like he escapes on a boat some other guy escapes on a random boat you know fast five villain escapes on i'm like where did all these boats come from man <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah because i was like you only showed three yeah and suddenly there's like eight so, yeah, they're all just driving that. boats. Somehow Conor McGregor hangs on to <laughs> the back of a yeah. boat. Uh, you know. But uh yeah. again, just don't uh you just gotta turn off that Think logic too, switch. Yeah. yeah. Death for definite. But uh, uh yeah, I think that's all I got here. Chris, I got some drum roll for us, unhinged reviews oh, about this movie. Oh really? Yeah, so I think I'm going to do this every time we do a movie because uh, I have a lot of fun reading some of these. And uh, I got a few from a, sh- a smorgasbord. I got half stars, two and a half stars, and some five stars here. Starting off low, half star from Fat Mike 9 says, Mr. Lyman, what you've done is one of the most insanely idiotic things I've ever seen. No point in your, ra- in your rambling dialogue, incoherent pacing, were you, even, were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational movie? Everyone on Amazon Prime is now dumber for having watched it. I award you no stars, and may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> uh, do you know where that's from? Um, you ever see Billy Madison? Oh, yes. Yeah. That from that, huh? That's, yeah, it's a little, little, little reference to that. This one okay. is a half star from Marcus Halberstram says men's cologne ad for domestic abusers took all the joy out of the road out of the roadhouse mythos i do appreciate jake gyllenhaal injecting copious amounts of steroids <laughs> and getting peeled out to the gills for this absolute crappiest movie back acne was popping in 4k <laughs> <laughs> i didn't notice any back i didn't there. either this one's half star from jason ashley it says this could have been fun had guy ritchie directed and channing tatum starred Watching Jake Gyllenhaal step into Patrick Swayze's shoes is like watching Richard Simmons play James Bond. Nice butt on Conor McGregor, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. I turned to my wife and I was like, "That's that's not bad." You... That's a fun introduction to that character. Not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I got two and a half stars from Scrum. Jake Gyllenhaal was definitely a choice. Having it set in the Florida Keys around a tacky tiki hut was legitimately an insane take. Dog crap writing. The script is truly awful. Conor McGregor scenes were my favorite. That's how bad this movie is. <laughs> and then uh, five stars from High Braun just says, This is my Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. After that, pretty much uh, sums up. I, I actually like reading negative comments for a couple reasons. Some of them are funny, but I also like to see some of them are, you know, some legitimate claims and, uh, I like to see opposing viewpoints just because everyone's got an opinion on something. And if we just hold fast to our opinions and don't acknowledge others, then what are we doing in this world? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like I like viewing other people's thoughts, even though I might not agree with them. But yeah. it's nice to just, you know, wow. see other viewpoints. That was very thoughtful of you and thought-provoking. Oh, thanks. Good job. Anyway. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah, that's all I got, too. Uh, uh, thanks for listening here. Uh, always a pleasure to uh, speak to the... What's... Uh, what are they... What are the stale popcorn uh, fans called, Steve? And another thing to workshop the... Ooh, maybe we'll call them the stalemates. Stalemates? That's not bad. That's just off the dome. That was Ooh, pretty fun. good. Stalemates? Uh, if you think anything better... Or different. Uh, Leave it in there in the comments below. Yeah. Stalemates, pop... Uh, pop lads? Pop. No, because there's girls in there, too. Pop what, Magnitude? Pop <laughs> what? <laughs> what, did he, what was he going to say? <laughs> uh, well, I, I think that's all we got. If you stayed around this long, um, thanks for listening, and... Uh, Make sure you like and subscribe and leave a review here for us and then go over to YouTube and follow us and Instagram and all that jazz. Email us if you want at thestalepopcornpod at gmo.com. Anything else, Chris? Yeah, let us know what movie we should do next. Uh, I think next week we might do 
Gojira versus King Kong. Oh, is that next week? Man, huh? man. It is next I week. I keep seeing yeah. trailers for like the biggest movie of the year. I'm like, Dune 2 just came out like two weeks ago, man. Let's call it. Yeah. Uh, let's call it now. Do you think Kong versus whatever is going to be good? Oh, it'll probably be like the last one. Probably even worse because if it, you know, I like Origins. Mm-hmm. I like the beginning. And I like seeing, like, first-time reactions in movies. You know, I like seeing Uncle Ben die. I like seeing Peter cry. I like seeing Aunt May cry. You know, I like seeing, you know, Gwen Stacy die. Okay, yeah. And then Peter cry. I like seeing Cedric Diggory die. And then (laughs) Father saying, that's my boy. (laughs) And uh, so, so anyways, what I'm trying to say is... uh, you like watching people die. <laughs> and you want to see King Kong die. Is that what you want to see? Not King. I want to go Godzilla. 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 Oh, because you're you get you're a real fan. Oh yeah. Godzilla. That primal, primal ape. <laughs> oh yeah. Godzilla is king to me. He's the king of the forest, the king of the jungle, whatever you George of the jungle, whatever it is, man. Uh, sure. Anyone else? I don't care about the humans. I'm still waiting for that Godzilla minus one to come out on digital, because mm. maybe I'll, maybe I'll get into the monster then. But, but yeah, well, I'm gonna say probably three out of five if I were to guess. I'm gonna say it's worse than this just because, and we talked about it. The human character is gonna really bog down that movie, and uh, it's probably gonna be the fight scenes are gonna be pretty disappointing. Just. King Kong punching up with his Infinity Gauntlet. You know how it goes. Are you saying worse than this as in Roadhouse or the last yeah. King Kong? Oh, yeah. I, it, That's going to be worse than Roadhouse. Let's, let's oh, be yeah. honest. This is sure. going to be top five movie of the year, if you ask me. Ooh, okay, okay. So far, it's number two, you know. Yeah, yeah. Not Can't hard believe to be. we didn't put this on the list of our tier list, did we? No. Oh, I didn't know about it until my brother texted me like a month ago and was like, check this out. Oh, nice. But yeah, anyways, we'll we'll, uh, talk to you next week. Uh, Let us know any other future movies coming out that you'd be interested in us reviewing, and we'll be sure to do that. Thanks. Sure, sure. If you're you're still here, here, uh, I'm going to play a little clip of us doing a Robert (laughs) F. Kennedy impression. Here it is. Okay. Okay, bye. I'm bye. bye. All right. Here's my impression of Robert F. Kennedy, the potential presidential candidate. Well, I need to know <laughs> understand what's wrong with the American people. Did you know my wife is Cheryl from Curb Your Enthusiasm? Cheryl from with Larry David. <laughs> from Terry, Larry David's movie show from HBO. Hello and welcome to this week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of just turn it into Steve-O a little there, too. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, here, guys. The <laughs> <laughs> That's a good Steve-O impression. <laughs>